Hey everyone, Mike here in the BFH garage. This shop is a mess. I have my trailer in here. It has a bent axle, so I have to order a new axle for that. It's sitting up on jack stands. I got some other projects going on, but today I am focusing on this 1998 uh, Jeep Wrangler TJ. I just finished installing ARB air lockers on it. Those are all set, ready to go. Now it's time to move on to the next step, which is reinstalling the axle shafts. So today I'm going to talk about axle shafts, in particular these right here. These are the Revolution gear and axle. These are 4340 chromoly shafts. Um, these have a 10-year warranty. Now this is their Discovery Series. This is made in India. If you are looking for um, the US made axle shafts, then you're going to have to go with the upgraded uh, 4340 with the 1350 U-joints. So these are the Discovery Series here. However, these have the 30 spline um, inner, so that's going to um, make a substantial increase in strength there, and that's going to be awesome for this Jeep. We're also going to install new unit bearings. As you can see, these are pretty much toast. Now, the one thing that people struggle with when putting shafts together is getting these U-joints in. U-joints tend to give people a problem and uh, they try all these different contraptions like a ball joint press or even a vise. Um, there's a real simple way to get this done that's gonna get it done right and I'm gonna show you that right now. These shafts use the Dana Spicer 5-760X U-joint. Now that is this U-joint right here, uh, plenty strong. The retaining clip they use for it is a full circle clip. Let me explain that to you. When you're looking at a Dana, or I'm sorry, when you're looking at a stock axle shaft, this is what you get. It is a half circle, uh, a little more than half circle C clip that fits over the U joint cap, and that's what holds it in place. And that's fine for a stock application. But as you're looking at this, you can see how it would be easy for this when you're out on the trail and you're turning hard right, hard left, and you're getting after it you put a lot of stress on all of these joints and parts and pieces. And what happens is these parts and pieces kind of expand a little bit, they tweak, they, they flex, things like that. What that leads to, these little guys right here can come undone and they'll fall right out. And when one of these C-clips falls out of your stock uh, shaft, then what that allows to happen is the U-joint cap to start to move out. And when it moves out, it's starting to come apart. And then when you make your next hard turn or you're, you're speeding up, what it'll do is it'll cause that uh, bearing cap to get in a bind. Everything kind of starts turning and it just, it breaks everything. So the ears on your axle shaft here will, will stretch and they'll just rip right out. That U-joint will fall out and you're dead in the water on the trail. We don't want that. So the thing I like about this particular U-joint style here from uh, Revolution, they use the full circle clips as you see right here. Now, as you can see, being a full circle clip, it's gonna lock onto that U-joint cap and it can't just fall out because there's too much material all the way around. And uh, that's what's gonna hold everything in place. That is uh, a, a major uh, component of this. It's a major part of that. I think a lot of people don't understand how important a full uh, circle clip is when you're dealing with Kamali shafts. Now. One thing I want to point out right now before we get going any further in this video, this is probably one of the most important things because if you get too far along and then come back to watch this video, you're gonna find yourself way behind the ball here. As you can see right here, I've already installed three of these circle clips. Installed's not the right word. I've, I have them around the trunnion there. And the reason for that is if you don't put these things on now, when you go to put your, um, uh, U-joints into your shaft, you're going to realize that you're not putting those circle clips in from the outside. They have to come from the inside into this groove. So get these things installed prior to putting them in your axle shaft. You are not going to be able to go over this cap. So pull your caps off. Make sure you don't lose all those little needle bearings in there. Don't drop your cap or you're going to have to get a whole new U-joint. Um, the other thing too, this these uh, U-joints here these are what, uh, they're called sealed U-joints. There's no Zerks anywhere. These offer um, a little bit more strength, but they already have the correct amount 
of grease in there. So don't go off and add grease to this because you could create a situation where there's gonna be a little bit too much pressure in there or, or whatever the case may be. But these already come properly lubed, so don't change that. So let's zoom in on this. I'll start showing you how to put this stuff together and we'll get on to that next step. To install the snap ring, the first thing you wanna do is remove this bearing cap. Take great care that you're not losing those needle bearings. These snap rings, when you have these pliers on there and you start spreading apart, they're under tension. And if that snap ring pops off of your snap ring pliers, it can take off at a, at a great speed and take out your eyes. So make sure you're wearing some eye pro when you're doing this because it's a pretty nasty hit when it does it. All right, to get this uh, full circle clip on here, we're gonna take our uh, snap ring pliers. And if you notice, I'm using my cheap ones right now, but these are doing the job for me. As I start to spread these on, I'm gonna come from the backside first, just spreading enough to get it over that seal and set it on there just like that. That's all there is to that. Now I'm gonna take this U-joint, I'm gonna place it over here. I'm gonna grab my long shaft. And now we need to get the U-joint installed into the shaft. So, putting that bearing cap there, we're putting this U-joint uh, bearing cap over here. Again, making sure we're not losing those needle bearings. You want to install your U-joint through one side and into the other, just like that. Now, as you do that, I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm gonna take this cap and I'm gonna start it right back over this side of the U-joint trunnion. You wanna make sure that those needle bearings don't get uh, caught up in there or fall out of place. So I can tell that that's in there and it's started. So let me zoom out so you can kind of see the process now. Hang on. So with that cap there, you know it's in right because you can feel it, the resistance as it's turning inside the cap. Now, like I said before, you do not need a ball joint press or anything like that. You need a BFH and it's pretty simple. So you're going to hold the shaft to where that U-joint is level. You can look right down the hole here and see that trunnion lined up in the circle. And then you're going to hit this and it's going to drive the cap in from the bottom side. Normally, you can use either a, a I, I prefer a 4x4 four four over 2x4, four but I'll use a 4x4 four four and that's what I'll use on the trail if I need to change out a U-joint in a uh, drive shaft or something like that. But in this case here, I'm on my welding table, so I don't need that piece of wood there, but you want to get this thing kind of flat. You're going to strike with a hammer. This is also another really important part. You don't want to hit clear out here on the earpiece. You want to hit right back here where the majority of the ear is, and it's going to be enough to drive down. I'm not saying you have to smack it. Let's just get it started first. And you could hear it grab and start to take off. My U-joint still fin uh, spins freely. And as you can see, it's already starting to go in. So you get to a certain part. Now you're going to see how your U-joint's flat with the ear right there. So now what I'm going to do is take the other U-joint cap and I'm going to start it on this side of the trunnion over here. Make sure those needle bearings are lined up the way they need to be. You can see how the U-joint slides back and forth. That's how you know where you're where you need to be. We're going to set that one nice and gentle. Come over here. And before I go any further, I'm going to check and make sure everything's going the way it needs to be and nothing's binding up. And now you have your caps in that far, your U-joint's not in a bind. Now you're not in far enough to get the circle clip on there. Let me show you. I mean, it's going to be kind of hard here, but let me see if I can get this lined up for you. So right there, your, your slot is clear up there. So we're not in far enough. You need to get a little bit further. That's where you take a socket that fits just inside the cap here. You're going to take this socket, put it on the back side. You're going to line your U-joint cap up with that. And as you're looking here, you could raise the shaft up or down, but you want it to be as, uh, as flat as possible. 
and then you're going to continue to drive this just a little bit until you can get that circle clip in there. And I'm still not quite there. That does it right there. So now, before I do anything else, I'm going to get that circle clip on because I need to now drive it back into the circle clip so I can get the other side on. And uh, I'm going to do that right now. These are the easy circle clips to get on. It's when you get that stub shaft in there, then you have to start getting into these, uh, getting into these tight spaces. So this should be relatively straightforward. However, the backside of that clip does like to lift up, so I'm gonna get a finger back there. You can get a screwdriver if you want to help push down. In fact, I'll do that. So as I start to spread this snap joint or snap ring, I get it around and now it's in place. And the way I'm going to check to make sure that it's all the way on is you're going to see the gap of that snap ring. So this snap ring right here, plus it slides around real easy. If it's not on all the way, that snap ring is gonna be opened up quite a bit. When it looks like it, uh, these do with the closed gap right there, that's how you know it's seated all the way in. The other part of that is, slides around in a circle fairly easily. So now what I need to do is take the socket below this other side. So you turn your shaft over and you're gonna pop it down a little bit. And what that's going to do is that's gonna expose the groove over here. This one's gonna be a little bit tougher to get because that U-joint's now tied up against that other snap ring. So now it's going to be um, a little bit tougher to get this snap ring on. And you'll see what I'm talking about as you're doing this. So it's not on all the way, so I'm gonna push it on the rest of the way with my screwdriver. Okay, here's a good opportunity to show you how this should look. So starting with the one that I've done correctly, you see how close that snap ring is together? If I turn this over now, you see how far apart that one is? That's telling me that even though it's in the groove right there, I can see it, it's not completely seated. So it's really, really important that you figure out where the problem is and then you get it seated. So I just found it right there, snapped it in. Now this snap ring is seated. Still a little bit tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my BFH, I'm gonna pop it right here just to give a little bit of upward pressure to allow that snap ring to pop into place. And that was it right there. I could actually see it close together. Now I'm gonna verify that it moves and it moves around a circle. The U-joint isn't tight. The U-joint is now installed into the long side of the shaft. All right, now we're gonna work on the stub shaft. So again, get your caps off. You're gonna take your stub shaft. You're going to work it until the U-joint fits through. You're going to grab one of your caps you're going to push it on until you can feel it seat onto the trunnion. Once you get that, you're gonna turn it onto it just like the last one. You're gonna take your BFH, and this time, instead of hitting over here, you're gonna be hitting on the stub shaft. So one way to do this is, I take a two by four over here, kind of prop this side up, then come over here to my stub shaft, and I'm gonna hit on this side right here. and you could feel that thing go right in. You can see it's already all the way in. Then I'm going to take my other cap, and I'm gonna slowly work it on, make sure those needle bearings get around the trunnion.
Take it, turn it this way. You joints nice and smooth, so now I'm put on the rest of the way. Now we need to take our socket, put it here, making sure that we are level as possible. Then you can see that's close enough to get to that snap ring. All right, so I have this in my vise set up to where you guys can see this. This is the snap ring I'm after right here. Let me get this turned the way I want. So as you can see, the access to it's gonna be far more difficult. You have to get it to this open side here. And then when you put your snap ring in there, or your snap ring pliers to get over the circle clip, then putting it down, you're gonna have a little room on the back side here. Now, if you guys can see, I have my slot right there for the snap ring. So now I'm going to try and drop this in while you're watching. First thing I have to do is get the uh, pliers in. As I'm spreading, I'm pushing down on the backside to get it around. And then that snap ring drops right in. Now, if it turns just like that, then we're good. You can see how the gap there is nice and tight. That's telling me that that is seated. Now what I need to do is put the socket on this side, pop it once that way to seat that uh, bearing cap against the, um, the snap ring, and then I can do this side over here. Okay, it's close. I'm going to screwdriver on the back side. Push it over the rest of the way. That looks like it locked into place. Let's take a look. It moves. It is locked into place. There we go. U joint has free play both directions. And that's good. All right, it's the same process for the short side too. So do the same thing again. Make sure you get those circle clips around that trunnion before you go to install those U joints. Using ball bearing, or I'm sorry, using ball joint presses, the problem with that is, is people start pushing on the caps right here and they can tend to make those ears start to bend in, everything binds up. And then when you try to get after it afterwards, it is a pain in the rear. You can see how a good BFH will uh, get everything where you need it. And again, out on the trail, you're not gonna have your ball joint press anyway. So get yourself a four by four block, same thing. Make sure you're hitting on this side, not the ear, and those things will pop out. Now, if you have a U-joint that's in there pretty good, um, you'll see a lot of corrosion, maybe some rust and things like that. Again, referring to you guys up in that rust belt, you're probably going to have to give this thing a good whack right here. So don't be afraid to hit it. As long as you're hitting it in line with the rest of all this right here, you're going to be okay. All right, that's it for the um, Revolution Gear and Axle Discovery Series um, axle shafts. Put them together. Now for some bonus content, I'm going to show you how to install your unit bearings and install these shafts into your axles. All right, moving on to the installation of the unit bearings here. Now these uh, unit bearings, they're a sealed unit. There's nothing you do to grease them. This is the way they come. One of the things that you gotta be really careful with on these, and you wanna make sure you have it uh, set up for the trail the right way, is this little um, raised edge right here around this bearing is what seats inside your knuckle. These can become seized on the uh, knuckle making them a bear to get out of there. So always put anti-seize right around that edge right there. And then I also put some anti-seize in on the splines there. So when we go to install this thing, it's, uh, it's not going to seize on. So you can get that started, make sure it's not going to fall out. Let me find my, my dead blow hammer. So in a vice, this is easy. If you don't uh, have a vice or for some reason you're doing this out on the trail 
then I would suggest leaving your axle shafts in, or at least getting them pushed on like this, get them in there, and then you're gonna drive uh, the unit bearing on with a nut. But in this case here, you could take a uh, dead blow and kind of get it started to a certain point. Now you're gonna see I still have about a half inch gap there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the nut and washer, I'm going to install that. And then I'm going to drive this on with my impact and that'll get it the rest of the way. Now you won't be able to get it torqued here because um, you know, unless you really clamp down on your vise, so this thing needs to go to 175 foot pounds. So what I'll do is I'll use my impact to make sure I get it seated all the way up against the stub shaft. Then what we'll do is we'll install the shafts into the housing and then I'll come back uh, when it's on the ground and I'll torque it the rest of the way to that spec. It'll make it easier to tighten that again. That's because that has to go to 175 foot pounds. So I make sure it seats all the way, get a little extra love. It's there. I know that it's not torqued yet, so I'm not gonna put on the other parts yet until I uh, get that done the rest of the way. Now we have to do is take this shaft, install it in the long side. But before we do that, I'm gonna get that stub shaft done. Couple things to note before you insert the shaft here. When you're dealing with your, your front housing, you have seals that are inboard there. So when you go to insert that shaft, you have to support it as you're installing it so it goes through the center of the seal and it doesn't rip or tear it. You gotta be really careful with that. So when I do uh, gear jobs where I'm changing seals, I make sure that I pack the inside of that lip. There's a little retaining spring there. I pack that with grease and I also get the uh, rubber surface of the seal um, covered in grease that way it's not running dry on the on the metal until that gear oil breaks it in. As you're going to notice here I also put uh, anti-seize around the inside of the knuckle here that's going to help anything uh, to keep everything from uh, sticking. And then I also put anti-seize on these uh, three 13 millimeter bolts that uh, go in from the back side. Now looking at the axle shaft the one thing I want to point out to you too is that that seal on the inside rides right here. So I put a little bit of grease around this as well. And before I insert this, what I'm going to do is take my drum dust shield, and I'm gonna get this on here, that way I don't uh, forget that. Now as you're doing this, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna see if I can do this backwards now because I normally do it the other way. You wanna make sure you don't let this shaft ride on the, on the uh, tube on the inside if you haven't cleaned it, because if there's a lot of dirt in there, then that's gonna create uh, some uh, contaminants getting in on your seal. So kind of go straight in as you can. And eventually you're gonna fill your butt up against that seal. And then it just goes straight through right there. That was a pretty seamless uh, move into that seal. So now I need to line up my dust shield, which goes like this. I'm gonna get the unit bearing the rest of the way like that. And then I'm gonna adjust this and I'm gonna line up the holes as best I can. Come from the back side with your retaining bolts. You're probably gonna have to move your unit bearing to get everything to line up. And that's it. So you can turn this to get those bolts lined up and once they're there, insert all three of them. Again, it's a 13 millimeter. You're gonna be on it with the uh, small socket. Then you're gonna get your torque wrench here, 75 foot pounds for each one of those bolts that secures that in place. All right, that's it for this side. Now we gotta do the long side. When you're done with that, put everything else back together. One thing I do want to note lastly is that the shaft here is steel. Um, that's not a paint coating on there. So if you don't want your shaft to get that rust kind of patina on it, then you may want to spray paint your uh, U-joint caps and the, the axle shafts prior to put them in there. That's entirely up to you. I don't give a crap, but uh, you will get some surface rust, up, uh, rust on that. So just be aware of it. 
Don't forget to torque these to 175. Get that cotter pin and that retaining it on there. That's one thing we don't want to forget. That's it for this job. Hopefully this helps you out. And again, there's a great uh, product revolution. Always puts out great products. You see the boxes here. I have the banner up there. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do believe in their products. They put out some really, really good stuff. Their gears are awesome. So I don't hesitate to recommend them. Um, other than that, that's it. Hope you enjoy.